Glad to see you back, grade 8 students. Are you excited for another active and fun lesson here on DepEd TV? If you are, get your pen and paper because today is another awesome day to remind you the importance of keeping our body, our mind, and our spirit in shape. Be ready and be prepared as we create meaningful experiences in physical education. Again, I am Sir Allen, your PEA teacher, and welcome back to The Fitness Project. In the previous episode, you learned that physical fitness is your capacity to do several tasks. The concepts were attained by studying the different physical fitness components, focusing on the health-related fitness components. Then, you were introduced to the importance of setting goals in achieving your desired fitness level, and you were able to conduct a physical fitness test at your own pace. For today's topic, we will talk about the other category of physical fitness, which is skill-related fitness. How is health-related fitness different from skill-related fitness? While health-related fitness involves skills that enable one to become and stay physically healthy, skill-related fitness involves skills or abilities that will enhance one's performance in athletic or sports events. Skill-related fitness is also known as performance-related fitness and it is more relevant to the athletes. There are six skill-related fitness components. These are agility, balance, coordination, speed, power, and reaction time. Let's have a more detailed discussion of each component. How is a basketball player able to move in all directions? That is because of agility. Agility refers to a person's ability to move their body quickly and easily. This also includes their ability to quickly change their direction while maintaining their balance. Agility is an important quality in many sports. Basketball players, for instance, are incredibly agile. They can efficiently change direction from jumping, sliding, and twisting in quick response to the movement of the ball and other players. The second component of skill-related fitness is balance. Balance is the person's ability to maintain an upright posture when moving or when they are in a standing position. There are lots of activities where balance is required for enhanced performance and safety. These are gymnastics, yoga, skateboarding, and surfing. So, gymnasts, yogis, skaters, and surfers all need highly refined balance skills to be able to participate in their sports. The Stork Balance Stand Test is one way of assessing your whole body's balance ability. This test requires a person to stand on one leg for as long as possible. Sometimes, the Stork Balance Test is conducted with the eyes closed, giving it a higher level of difficulty. For our third component, Think of hitting a golf ball off a tee, catching a fly ball, or blocking a shot in soccer. What do you think is the skill most needed in these activities? If your answer is coordination, then you're right! Coordination is the third skill-related component of physical fitness. This relates to one's ability to use the senses, such as one's sight or hearing, together with other body parts during movement. Coordination is the ability to select the right muscle at the right time with the proper intensity to achieve proper action. To improve your coordination, try exercises such as throwing objects at specific targets, doing jump rope drills, dribbling a basketball, and juggling. When talking about the skill-related fitness components, it's impossible not to give speed some thought. Speed refers to a person's ability to move fast. This relates to the ability to perform and complete a certain physical activity as quickly as possible. Many sports rely on speed to gain advantage over your opponents. For example, a basketball player making a fast break to perform a layup, a tennis player moving forward to get the drop shot, a football player outrunning the defense to receive a pass. Did you know that Usain Bolt is considered to be the fastest man in the world? He set the world record in 100 meter sprint at 9.58 seconds. If you have seen high jumpers, 
gymnasts, or Olympic weightlifters at the Olympics, you've been a witness to how power is one of the most impressive skill-related components of fitness. Power is the ability to apply maximum force as quickly as possible. It is about performing movement with strength at a fast pace. Power is considered to be a combination of strength and speed. To assess the lower body strength and power of the leg muscles, a standing long jump is widely applied. Last on our list is reaction time. Reaction time is the ability to reach or respond quickly to what you hear, see, or feel. For example, when a swimmer hears a whistle, they kick off and begin their lengths in reaction to it. The swimmer with the best reaction time will kick off first and therefore have an advantage over the others. Other reaction time examples are a goalkeeper saving a penalty or a badminton player reacting to a smash shot. Although these skill-related components of fitness are not employed and emphasized routinely in the physical education setting, this can be extremely enjoyable for students. Improving agility, balance, coordination, speed, power, and reaction time counts down to a gaining experience in a particular sport and performing sport-specific drills. Those who have a high level of skill-related fitness are more likely to be physically active than those who have a lower level of skill-related fitness. To improve your level of fitness, you must first know your current level. The next step is to set goals and then work toward improving your health and skill-related fitness components. This can be done by using what we call the FIT principle. What is the FIT principle? FIT stands for frequency, intensity, time, and type of exercise. These are the four elements you need to think about to create workouts that fit your goals and fitness level. This method depends on a variety of factors including the type of workout you are doing, how hard you are working, your fitness level, and your exercise goals. This is an example of a fitness plan. The first thing that you will need to set up in your workout plan is frequency or how often you will exercise. Depending on your goal, the guidelines recommend moderate exercises up to 5 to 6 times per week. However, if you want to work out more, you can do more vigorous exercises as often as 3 to 7 times per week. Next is intensity. It has to do with how hard you will work during the exercises. Changing the intensity depends on the type of workout you are doing. We have three different intensity levels. These levels include low, moderate, and high intensity. It's a good idea to have a mixture of all three so you can stimulate different energy systems and avoid overtraining. The next element of your workout plan is time or how long you will exercise during each session. There isn't one set rule for how long you should exercise and it will typically depend on your fitness level and the type of workout you are doing. The type of exercise that you will do is the last part of the FIT principle and an easy one to change to avoid overuse injuries. Remember, it is important to keep in mind that everyone's fitness goals will be different based on age, sex, current fitness level, and available resources. The FIT principle outlines how to manage your program to get better results. It also helps you to figure out how to change your workouts to avoid boredom, overuse injuries, and excessive weight loss. Having a variety of workouts of different intensities and duration will give you a solid, balanced program. To check your understanding of our lesson today, let's have a short quiz. Do you think you can get a perfect score? Let's get started. Observe the following picture and identify what kind of skill-related fitness component is shown. Choose the letter of the best answer. Number 1. Which component of skill-related fitness is this person demonstrating? Number 2. Which component of skill-related fitness is this person demonstrating? Number 3. 
which component of skill-related fitness is this person demonstrating? What was your result? Did you do well? If you were able to get all the correct answers, you did a great job. If you did not, do not worry for there is always a next time. You may visit our DepEd TV channel for more video lessons. To wrap up our discussion, let's have an agreement. This is a personal fitness contract. The purpose of this contract is to motivate you and to help you stay committed to a healthy lifestyle and on track with the goals that you have set for yourself. Excellent! Congratulations on your decision to improve your health. Deciding to make a change in your life is never easy. Breaking old habits and creating healthy ones can be challenging and even discouraging at times. It may seem like something that is out of reach for you, but if you have a right mindset going in, it is not impossible and you'll be thankful you did. I hope you have learned a lot in our episode today. Keep in mind, the best project you'll ever work on is you. Again, this is Sir Allen, your PEA teacher, reminding you, commit to be fit in the fitness project. World Changers, I am your health aid teacher, Teacher Mary Ann of Lehan, and I'll be helping you to learn, understand, and enjoy while at the comfort of your home here in Health Education. Health Education for a Healthier Nation. In our previous episode, we have discussed some of the basic concepts of sexuality. Do you still remember the mnemonic for that lesson? Hmm, come closer and let me help you. Think. That's G-G-G-S-S. Say it again. G-G-G-S-S. G stands for gender. Another G would be gender role, then G for gender equality, S is for sex, and the last S is for sexuality. So these are some of the basic concepts of sexuality. But have you ever asked yourself, how does your sexual behavior develop? What are the aspects that influence your sexuality? Don't you worry, because this is going to be our health tech of the day. In this episode, you will learn the factors that affect one's attitudes and practices related to sexuality. And this is based in your self-learning module, Quarter 1, Week 3. Are you excited for that? If yes, let's wash our hands, cleanse our minds, and recharge our souls. Go, get your module, ball pen, and notebook so that we can begin. Your sexuality is naturally driven within yourself from birth, but there are factors that affect your points of view and practices in relation to your sexual manners, and these are called factors affecting your attitudes and practices related to your sexuality. We can easily remember these aspects through this mnemonic. I know we all love to eat while doing anything, so for that, Say, Mary cooks pizza and fries. Again, it is Mary cooks pizza and fries. You can observe on your screen that in every word in this sentence is in capital letter because every capital letter stands for aspects that affect your behavior connected to your sexuality. Let's discuss the first aspect which is represented by the first letter of the word Mary. Letter M stands for media. Media is a collective term that refers to any tool, device, or program which is used to communicate information. It may come in print or non-print. Print media includes newspapers, posters, billboards, magazines, and books. 
while non-print media contains radio, television, and digital devices such as computers, laptops, netbooks, tablets, cell phones, and others. And through this, you may acquire knowledge or any information about your sexuality that may or may not affect your perspective. According to a study done in 2004, mass media is one of the most pervasive influence in the lives of Filipinos today. As you regularly watch television, listen to radio, surf, and read news on internet, you expose yourself to different messages, opinions, and ideas that you tend to observe or emulate. For example, I believe you have someone in mind that you look up to. That person may be an influencer or a celebrity. Most of the time, individuals tend to imitate their idols' fashion sense, gestures, the way they talk, and sometimes even their values in life. That's just normal, but let me give you a health tip. Always remember to cross-check and validate the information that you get from any form of media, especially those from the internet. Because fake news is everywhere. Once again, media is one of the factors that affects your sexuality. Let's proceed to the second word of the sentence, which is hooks. The capital letter is C and it stands for culture. Culture is defined as a collection of beliefs, behaviors, objects, and other characteristics common to the members of a particular group or society. So how does culture influence your sexual behavior? Culture is one of the main factors that defines people, individuals, and groups. They are expected to conform to society's shared values and traditions which includes cultural notions on gender and sexuality. Because of this, children are being raised to adhere to the cultural standard pertaining to masculinity and femininity. This is according to the research of Campo Arias 2010 entitled Essential Aspects and Practical Implications of Sexual Identity. According to our history, women before do not have the right to participate in political activities such as voting and aiming for a position in a government. But as the time passed by, and as women and the people fought for their rights, the world had changed and the culture evolved. And that's the reason why we now have women leaders in our society today. Moving on, the third word in the sentence is pizza. The capital letter is P, and it stands for peers. Your peers are the people you usually interact with outside of your family. They may be your friends, schoolmates, and neighbors. They play a huge role shaping your sexuality because you spend a lot of your time with them. For example, if all of your friends are interested in playing basketball, you have a tendency to also engage in that activity. This may also happen when it comes to your decisions about your sexual behaviors. Peers may even influence you to change your likes and interests. The way you speak, the way you move, dress, or even how you act. However, be careful in choosing your peers. Some may influence you to do positive and healthy practices, but some may lead you to risky behaviors. That's why you need to choose your friends wisely. As what the Greek dramatist Menander of Athens said, bad company corrupts good character. Finally, the last word in the sentence is family. Now, let's talk about family. Family, especially your parents, are your first mentors regarding your sexual identity because they see your first in life how you bloom, how you grow, and how you develop as a human being. Family members can influence you to have strong self-control, self-respect, and high self-esteem. They may also guide and introduce you to their life values and principles that may help you in making responsible decisions. That's the reason why your parents need to establish open communication with you about your sexuality. Ideally, your family is there for you to help and guide you in the right path. 
but they also need to understand that it is essential for them to also trust you. Again, our mnemonic is Mary Cooks Pizza and Fries. M is for media, C is for culture, P is for peers, and F is for family. And these are some of the factors affecting your sexuality. And for our health playlist of the day, here's a spoken word poetry composed by Alisa Rain de la Vega, a student from Bagong Silang High School, titled Mithiin. Sa tuwing kayo'y iniisip may tinig sa aking dibdib, kung bakit ganun na lamang ang diskriminasyon na kayo naman ay tulad din namin. Kitid ng isip ng nakararami ang hadlang sa ating mithi. Mithiin na kayo ay mahalin at huwag na sanang maliitin. Yakap mula sa mga mahal sa buhay, isang tanggap kita mula sa nanay. Suportado kita, sambit ni tatay, mga katagang tatatak sa kanilang isipan. Laging tandaan anuman ang iyong kasarian, nagmamahal at walang tinatapakan. Walang masama sa pagiging ikaw, komisyon mo'y maganda, magpatuloy ka't balakit, alaya ng sayaw. Meet Hiin Before we end this learning episode, let me give you a piece of advice. It is true that there are various aspects that influence your sexuality as a human being. But always remember, the greatest among of this will always be yourself. Your choices and your decisions in life with corresponding responsibilities. Again, for more Health Aid lessons, I am your Health Aid teacher, Teacher Mary Ann Oblihan, always at your service. I hope to see you again here in Health Education, health education for a healthier nation.